Error handling in JavaScript or TypeScript can be messy. Using try-catch will sometimes just end up like this. And I call this the complex try-catch hell. But luckily, there is a new operator allowing us to make error handling way easier and cleaner. And today, we take a small look at it. This wonder weapon is called the safe assignment operator. And this allows us to handle errors without the need of nested try-catch blocks. So let's jump right in. But first, a quick recap. Why do we need error handling? Error handling is very crucial because let's say we have a function do something and this function should do something. So we call it. The problem is inside of this function, maybe something is not working very well and an error is thrown. The problem when an error is thrown is that we need to catch it. And that's why we have this try catch thing. So what we probably need to do here is to say try catch. And in the try block, we insert a function, what we need to try. And in the catch block, we just catch if some error occurs. So we say probably console.error and then the error. And that's how we usually do error handling. But now there's this problem when the catch thing just gets very complex. And that's what I have here. So we just fetch some data and yeah, maybe something gets wrong. So then we have a fetch error and we need to catch that. So then we have this process data and maybe something goes wrong as well here. So we catch that and we just have catch a catch of the final error, the operation errors. This is all, yeah, layered up and overall very, very, very ugly because we have this mutable variables here and the overall structure is just a very beautiful to look at. So luckily we have this new feature. This new feature is called the safe assignment operator. What we can see here, so a question mark and then the equals to operator. And what this allows us to do is to just make a normal fetch, but we don't get the response back. We get the error and with the response back. So we don't need to try and catch the error. We just get it back if the error is happening. So if there's an error happening in the function we call here, so this could be any function, then this error variable is not null anymore. So there's an error inside and we can just ask if there's an error, then console error. So this is probably the part we do with the catch block. So we don't need to do that anymore. And let me tell you, this looks very, very clean, isn't it? So even if we have an example that is a little bit more complex, like this one, we don't have this ugly nesting. We just say, okay, if there's a network error, then console error, network error. If there's a pass error, do the pass error stuff. And this leads to some advantages. So the first advantage is we just have cleaner code because of the simplified error handling. And this is actually doing exactly the same, but you see it's less lines needed and it's not so nested. So this is just easier to understand. So the second benefit is we have this consistent behavior. So it provides a consistent way to handle errors across different parts of the whole application. So we don't have this nested try catch blocks. We just have this clean structure. And this is a little bit like using the await syntax and instead using the promise syntax of JavaScript. So it just gets cleaner and easier to read. And yeah, this is the biggest advantage of this operator here. But how can we make use of this now in real world applications? So I have some different, yeah, variants you set it up. So what you probably can do is just get lost with the error and just don't use it. But I don't know why you should probably do that. The next thing is you can just do an instant return. So this is very useful for some yeah, more complex code where you just want to return directly. And this looks very ugly with a try catch example. And the next thing is that you don't want to have a lot of mutable variables in your application. So for example, with the try catch block, we always have this, for example, write status here. And this is a let because it can't be a constant because we don't know what it is because it is different if it's in the try block and it's different if it's in the cache block. So we don't have any other possibility to just do a let here and this is at this state null and then just give it a value. But with a new way of doing things, this gets better. Like we can use the const keyword everywhere. We don't need this let keyword anymore. And the benefit of that is that we don't have mutable values and that the values we have, like the write status, can be done immutable. Yeah, maybe you ask yourself, how is this working actually? How, wh what is happening here in the background? And I just can tell you, there's this JavaScript thing called symbols and there's a symbol.result and this is used uh, yeah, internally. But yeah, going into JavaScript symbols may come up in a whole different video. So maybe you want a video about that, tell me. But yeah, usually you don't need to know how it's working, just that it's working and how it can make your code even better. But I can read the question in your head. Can I use this right now? And sadly, no. It's currently an early draft stage, so it needs to be accepted by the TC39 committee, the group responsible for ECMAScript standards, which is responsible for what we code here in JavaScript. But if you want to be informed when this is finally dropping, then this channel is probably the best place for that. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And thanks to Tom for watching until here. Have a great day and bye.